What do you believe and what do you stand for? Yeah, it, it's a great question. Look, I mean, I, I believe that the JFK party of the past, the JFK Democrats are gone. The left, the hard left has hijacked today's Democrat party. And what we see, we all see it, is a polarized society where there's very little overlap uh, between the two parties because the ideologies are fundamentally different. When you think about what it means to be a conservative, what are we trying to conserve? Well, we're trying to conserve five to 10,000 years of recorded history where we've tried different forms of governance and government, and we've tried different ways to in instantiate our rights, our natural rights as individuals. And we've come up with a fantastic way to do that. It's a constitutional republic. Our constitution enshrines the rights that we have been given by God, right? And they protect our rights from the government. And it's the left, it's the radical left today that is trying to deconstruct that constitutional republic, that form of government that we so value. And every time that you see the right compromise on those core values, we're taking another brick out of that wall, another, another brick out of the institution that protects us. And we've got to have people that will take a stand. We've got to have people that will not just draw lines in the, in the sand, they'll chisel them into the stone because those values are timeless and they shouldn't change. What do, so you say those, stake. what do you say those core values are, Nick? Yes, so the core values, first of all, as I mentioned, we have the rights for, for life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Government should be as small as possible. Yeah. Government should not be controlling our lives. The private sector should be allowed to flourish. The regulatory state should be greatly diminished. Uh, I believe that people want to be left alone. I mean, when you look at uh, the environment that we have today, regular folks out there who are working hard, sometimes two and three jobs just to make ends meet, are having to take time away from their lives, from their kids, from growing their families, and focus on a political discussion that they really wish they wouldn't have to be involved in. And I think the problem that we've got is we have a religious activist left, right? They've got religion around their ideology and they will stop at nothing. They're almost missionaries going out mm. trying to change the environment that we live in. And regular people are sick of it. And I think that's that's part of why we've seen Donald Trump do so well over the last several years, because he resonates with people. He's speaking to regular people. And I think, you know, we talk about what are those core values? Common sense values. It's about protecting the family, protecting kids, protecting young women from competition, from men in sports. It's uh, it's the fundamental, basic uh, American way of life that is at stake in this election. And I think that, um, you know, it's, it's common sense values that are on the ballot that in this election. And I'll tell you, every time that you, that you see an election cycle come up, you hear some politician tell you that this is the most important election mm -hmm. of your lifetime. This actually is. This, it, this actually it really is feels most... like things just keep escalating, right? And I agree with you on those values. And two that I would add to the ones you mentioned, and I know that you share these as well, um, the support for law enforcement, public safety, and national security, what they're doing at the border, the invasion that the Biden administration and the far left have allowed in order to infiltrate our country and absolutely destroy our cities and communities is a tantamount to an, a tantamount to an act of war. And then also I would add to it uh, resource support for resource development in America, and I would say resource dominance, but I'm not sure that everyone in the in the Republican Party agrees with going that far, but at least we would support the development of resources here in America rather than being absolutely dependent on foreign adversaries that can just cut us off like some of them are currently doing where we've now drained our strategic petroleum reserve and we're dependent on people who want to take us out as a country to supply our basic energy needs like to me yeah. like you say these are common sense i it is surprising i agree with you surprising that these are even falling on party lines anymore we used to disagree about how to implement these principles now we even disagree whether these are principles Yes, you are 100 percent correct. And I, I tell people this all the time. I say, look, if you ask the average five year old in a city, right. where does milk come from? They're going to tell you the grocery store. Right. Milk comes from a cow. Right. Gasoline doesn't come from the gas station. Right. It, it comes from oil that gets refined, that moves through the supply chain and arrives at a gas station where you can purchase it. 
we have become so disconnected, disassociated with the origin story right. of the resources that we have in life that we think that they're always going to be there. And so you get these crazy ideas that come out of the left that, that are anti-resource right. because they think somehow that's that that resource will be there no matter what policy they have. Well, that's just not true. If they raise the cost of those resources, if they diminish our ability to develop those resources, we're not going to have them. The one thing that we have in America that other nations do not have economically, we have the US dollar, we have the world's reserve currency. When you go into your, into your kitchen, when you go into your garage, when you go into a Walmart, tell me how much of that was made in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have hollowed out our manufacturing base and we rely on the value of that dollar. And so when we talk about some of the issues that are on the ballot, this is a critical issue that's on the ballot. And, it, and, I, and I'm sad to report that it's not just Democrats that have this spending problem, it's Republicans as well. Mm -hmm. We need to get people in Congress who will have fiscal discipline, help balance that budget, reduce the deficit at a minimum, so that we can protect the value of that dollar. Because if we lose that reserve currency status, the things that we consume, because That's we don't right. produce them, we won't be able to continue to consume them, and our American way of life will suffer dramatically. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. You know, I really appreciate that picture that you gave, Nick, about conservatism being about those those bricks in the wall. And there there's this there's this misconception that conservatives oppose progress. We don't oppose progress. We embrace progress, but we understand that it has to be built on something, something solid. Right. And so we agree that there are fundamental principles that form a solid foundation upon which progress can be built. But what we're seeing right now and, and to the points that you and Kelly have been making is that everything's getting torn down. Institutions are getting torn down by the left. Um, the, rule economy, of law. the rule of law is getting being torn down by the left. Uh, the the, na the nation's borders, nations are getting the, even the idea of a nation is getting torn down by the left. We're seeing our resources and our ability to, you know, to produce and manufacture within the country being getting torn down by the left, and they call that progress. And somehow they have enough people fooled that that's actually leading us into a better and brighter future uh, that they've somehow managed to, to to cling to power. However, people are waking up to this. Yeah. Right? And we're beginning to see, to your point, what is Trump's going on around, around the country, and we're seeing African Americans go his way. I think we're also, you know, we're seeing uh, Democrats begin to wake up to the reality that these ideas uh, are not are not progressive. Well, they're not resulting they're in the outcomes they want. Nick, yeah. I want to follow up on a line that you just said, the origin story. Would you share with us your origin story, so to speak? Yeah, we've got about yes. a minute and a half that in the segment. A, that <laughs> yeah. is a great question. That is a great question. You said a minute and a half left in the segment? Yeah, yeah okay. go for it. All right, I'll be brief. So uh, I'm from Alaska, which people automatically assume. But what a lot of folks don't realize is my, my parents split up when I was young and I ended up being raised by my grandparents and they moved us as far away from uh, the activity that was happening in Alaska. We grew up down in Florida, my sister and I, with my grandparents. They are hard conservative Christians from the South. And I was raised in the church. I was raised conservative. I was in young Republicans in high school. So I I'm a baggage, which in Alaska, for those who are maybe outside of Alaska don't realize, is, a, is a, it's usually associated with a Democrat name. Uh, I was raised conservative. I was raised Republican. I came back to Alaska about 20 years ago, and uh, it was shocked, actually, to find that uh, many people had believed that I would automatically have been a, a Democrat. But turns out, and I'm not a biologist, but it turns out that people have two sides of every family, and, it turn, and my my other side of the family is hard red. So that's how I was raised. And but it's and I, I have endorsed and supported and adopted those values, not simply because I was raised that way, but because I think that's what makes the most sense. I think that's the closest to our founder's vision. And I think that, um, you know, it it's it's a vision. We've just talked about it in the segment, but it's a vision that, that recognizes that uh, that America does best when government is small, kept in its lane and the people are left alone.